Welcome to this episode of Heaven Encounters. My good friend Wayne Fowler is with us today. He died from a heart attack, but one week prior, he was miraculously healed. What he experienced in heaven with Jesus will absolutely astound you. So Wayne, it's great to have you with us today. It's a very big pleasure to be here, Randy. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Wayne. So let's start with this. You were not a believer uh, and you had this miraculous healing. Tell us about that and how that led to your being saved and, and your uh, eventual heart attack and, and afterlife experience. Uh, sure, Randy. Look, I was... I was an adult. I was uh, 27 at the time, and I did not. I was not a Christian. Uh, I was actually deep into New Age uh, philosophy, and I, I was truly searching, and I believed there was a God, and I didn't believe I was that God, so I was actually looking around and trying to be able to find out just who this was or what it was and that sort of thing. And so ultimately, I had come to uh, this crossroads. And this crossroads was when my wife, who had previously uh, been in the church and was a Christian, uh, but when we met, she wasn't. She had uh, uh, backed away from the Lord at that time. But as we had had our kids, what had happened was I was still searching and I had felt that we needed to be able to get them involved in spiritual encounters. So as it would happen, there's no coincidences with God. I'll just say that right now. We ended up connecting with a church to get them to go to vacation Bible school. And, uh, and it just happened to be with the pastor that was her pastor when she was a kid. Uh, I went uh, at the request of this pastor. We had spoken a few times. I had gone, and actually, uh, there was a week-long revival going on, and I actually went to one, and, uh, and then ultimately, I was just, I felt something in me. I felt something like, wow, this is different. I hadn't heard about this Jesus person like this. I didn't have this background of information about the culture and the, and the history and the meaning of words and those types of things. And so I was just so intrigued. Uh, then a couple of days later, I ended up getting a seriously bad case of chicken pox. And uh, I just thought it was so strange because I had had it before. Well, I had actually then gone, uh, I, I, I had a meeting with my wife and she came to me and she said, Wayne, can I tell you something? And I said, sure, honey, what, what? She said, I know you don't believe in the devil. And I didn't at the time. I didn't believe in a hell. I didn't believe in a devil. I, I, I didn't believe in anything. But she told me, she said, what if there is a devil? And what if he's trying to keep you from going because there's something for you, Wayne? And I looked at her and I said, you know, what if you're right? What if you're right? Do I want to miss this opportunity right now? Do, what if this is my only chance? What if that's in case? And I said, all right, baby. I'm going to go. And we ended up going. And uh, I, I, of course, was covered up. We had to come up with a plan to be able to protect people. I, I didn't want to get people sick or anything like that. And I thought that was the case. But as it turned out, when I got there, and it was so bad. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, I was running 106 degree temperature. It was huge. They were trying to keep it down. They I was having to take cold baths to, to try to be able to do that. And they were saying that if I didn't do something myself, if the temperature didn't drop, I was going to have to be hospitalized. And so it was, it was really bad. So I went 
But the atmosphere changed, Randy. And then when we actually got into this song, our God is an awesome God, something just, wow, really touched me. And I started singing it because I could see the words on the screen. And I was just belting it out. And then, of course, I catch notice of my wife watching me out of the corner of my eye, in which she has this look of shock on her face. And she tells me, which I've always been so, it's always so funny. Baby, you've got to go to the bathroom right now. And I, I said, no, I don't, I, which I didn't. But that's not what she was trying to tell me. She's saying, yes, you've got to go check this out. And so I said, okay, okay. And I go into the bathroom trying to figure out just exactly what she was getting at. And what I discovered, Randy, as I'm looking in the mirror, I realized what she was wanting me to see. Everything was gone. I had been, that, that feeling that I had had was actually me being healed. I was miraculously healed. Everything was gone. The temperature was gone. All of the pox were gone. Everything all over my entire body, they were all gone. And uh, I knew in that moment, in that moment, suddenly this realization came to me. She was right. She was right. I am supposed to be here. There is a devil. There is a God, and he's wanting me to be here right now. And here is the proof. Oh, my goodness. And Randy, as I'm talking about it right now, it's just like, wow. And I just took off the covering clothes, and I strutted back in there. I was just filled with this energy. And at that, I said, I belted out, I've been healed. And she says, uh-huh, uh-huh. She was so excited for me and I was so excited and I knew something was going to happen. And what happened then? At the end, when we have this altar call and everything, we go up and I had the most powerful, as if it wasn't powerful enough, I have the most powerful salvation experience and filling of the Holy Spirit my goodness, my goodness, earth shattering for me. And, uh, and in that, I was actually, I'm, I'm filled up with this and my environment in front of me. Of course, I'm standing at the front along with a bunch of other people. And I'm, I'm, I'm you know, at the platform and we're praying and everything. And as I'm filled with this, this power goes through me. And I can see, well, I should say not see. What happens is the environment in front of me changes. And I can see this pink mist. And I'm engulfed in it. And suddenly my surroundings change. And in those surroundings, then... I am in the presence of God. And he tells me that I am born at that time. He tells me that. The words that he actually speaks, and I can hear them. Today, I've begotten you, meaning I've been born again right then. I didn't even know what that meant at that time, but I found out later, right? Because I knew nothing about God. And uh, But these waves of love crashing over me just washing over me, a, a, a love I hadn't experienced before. And what I find out, it was actually just a taste, Randy, just a taste of what was to come. Because afterwards, as I'm brought back in, it was four hours later. I thought it was four minutes later. Four hours later, the church is empty, and the only people that are there are me, my wife, the pastor, and his wife. That's it. And they were just amazed. And I had actually been uh, uh, baptized. And I, I, I thought it was a memory. I thought it was like some vague memory, but I had been baptized. And the pastor's wife told me she was in tears, sobbing. So was my wife saying, Wayne, Wayne, you've had such a powerful experience. It's such amazing. 
but you have to be careful now, Wayne. And of course, as these waves would crash over me, I would be in song and praise in this heavenly language that just would just pour out of me in praise to God. And I, I, I would then come back and then I told her, I don't understand what you mean. She says, the devil is going to want to steal what you just got. You need to be careful. And I said, okay. I didn't know at that time, but Randy, I found out seven days later when the devil took my life. Hey, and that, that, was, that was a prophetic statement from your wife at the time. Yes. So you had been saved only to be found, well, you were dead a week later. I was. Uh, the, and, and the thing about that was, so it, it, this is how it works out. You know, the devil comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. Again, I didn't know that at the time, but of course I know that now. And uh, I belong to the devil. I, I belong to him, you know, hook, line, and sinker up until that moment. But he had no more call on me. But there was still a lot that needed to be taken out. And what he was taking out was my life. And uh, so on the day that it happened, I had gone this whole week. I felt great. I felt like a new person. I, did, I didn't even know the person I was. I was so happy. I was so clean, Randy. I, I felt like everything inside, I felt like some scrubbing bubbles had gone, you know, everything in me was so clean. And, but on this seventh day, which was, uh, I should point out when I was saved, that day was Halloween. That was Halloween. And so on that devil's day, he lost me. But this seventh day, I then suddenly felt really bad. I, I, I felt fluish and everything else. And I started breaking into a cold sweat. It came on very quickly. And uh, I was having difficulty breathing and that sort of thing. I was just labored in that deal. And I had told my wife I needed to go to bed early because I, I, I just didn't feel well at all. Well, she had said, I'll come in here with you. And I said, no, 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 no. You, she said, I want to. I said, okay, just, I'm going to go in now. You do that. So I gone in, got ready for bed. She came in a few minutes later, but I was just all over the place. I couldn't get comfortable. I felt this, I could almost hear my heartbeat pounding and I could feel this throbbing going down my arm and that sort of thing. Well, she fell right to sleep. And uh, because she was always able to do that. It's just really strange, but I couldn't get comfortable. And then a few minutes later, as I try to find ways to get air in my lungs, suddenly this huge pain came out of nowhere. I was completely unprepared for it. And it was like an elephant just like slammed in the center of my chest. And I just, oh, grabbed myself and just, just kind of came up and I, it was so very painful, so very painful. I wanted to call out to Denise to wake her up because it was, I knew this was not good, but I couldn't. The words were just like stuck in my throat. I, I couldn't say anything and I couldn't move either. I felt like I was just like stuck in this position. And so then when I realized that, then I thought the only thing that I could think, I, I couldn't say anything. So I called out to God in my mind. And, and I, I said, God, God, you've got to help me. Take this pain away. If you don't, if you don't take this pain away, I don't know what I'm going to do. I was just at the end. And then suddenly, just a, good, just a couple of seconds later, all of the pain just went away. And, and I thought, Oh, wow. God's listening to me. He heard me. Now, all this time, I, of course, my eyes had been clenched shut, you know. And But then I thought to open them. And when I opened them up, I wasn't in bed anymore. I was actually standing beside my bed. And I was looking down at my body. And I knew it was my body on the bed. And there was this hand that was clutched. I'm just looking at it, and I thought, I'm dead. 
it was very matter of fact, the, the way that I'm saying it. But then I quit. And I don't look so good either, you know, uh, because it looked so, the person, this body on the bed was so filled with pain. It looked like it. Right. And, and so but I'm looking around. I noticed then that all of these senses that I had, we normally talk about our sight, smell, taste, touch, hearing. They're, they're nothing in comparison. So suddenly I am in this spiritual world and I have superhero senses and even more senses, of course, than we have in our physical body. And I'm able to see all of these things. I can see through walls. I can, I can focus in on things, just like zoom into it miles or light years away. It didn't matter. You can focus in on these and be right there. And I hear this voice in behind me. And this voice says, Wayne. Well, at first I didn't know where it was coming from. And I just hear, I'm like, did somebody just call me? I knew it wasn't Denise. She's laying there asleep. And then I hear it again, Wayne. And I turn around and I can look out on the curb through this window that's there beside my wall. And I can see this woman and she's out on this curb and she's in this cone, what appears to be like a spotlight that's shining down on her. And I then, I recognize her and I think, who is this person? This is Linda. I, I couldn't tell you today, Randy, who this Linda was, but at that time I did. I knew her. There was this kind of connection, this knowing that I had. And I walked right through the wall to go out to see her, which seems just like perfectly normal because that's what we're like. When I say hi and she looks at me and she smiles and she says, Wayne, there's someone that wants to meet you. Well, I look up and I, I because she looks up and I say, Oh, okay, who's that? And there's this pinpoint of light that I can see far away. Well, as soon as I'm like, okay, as soon as I recognize this pinpoint of light, then I feel these big hands grab me around my center. And they're huge hands. I mean, I can't see them but I can feel them. You can feel the fingers and the thumbs and everything. And it grabs me around my center and starts to lift me up. Just like you would lift up a little, your little child, right? And, uh, and so, but it caught me off guard because I didn't see that. It felt good, but it, I just didn't know who that was. And I, I throw up my hands to try to brace myself, which I can't do. And so I, I noticed though, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I'll look at my hand and I can see this bluish purplish glow of light that's coming from me. It's coming from my body and my vision is able to zoom in and see through my veins. It's almost like it's semi, uh, it's translucent. You can see there and that sort of thing. So I end up going through here and I'm just thinking like, wow, that's cool. But I go up into space, I'm being lifted up, and there's a portal that opens up in front of me. And, uh, and, and I can see it, it's in the shape of a funnel in which I'm going up into it. And Randy, oh, I felt so good. I feel this breeze that just kind of goes through my soul. It's, it's, it's warm and wonderful and cool. And all around this tunnel, are angels. And I knew they were angels. I hadn't seen angels before, but I had this knowing these are all angels. They were like military men. They do have wings, but they weren't outstretched. They were, you know, like they were at attention, all shoulder to shoulder, all along this entire tunnel. They're dressed in this, this armor. It was very ornate and, and nice and blue, it had this bluish tint color to it. And, uh, and they were all great. And I felt like they, I could understand what they, they were very happy to see me. I didn't know why, but they were happy to see me. And they had this thought that they were very happy to be there for this moment. I thought, for me? And I thought, oh, wow. But I end up going through this tunnel to this light. 
uh, at the end, but you know, the ubiquitous light at the end of the tunnel. But I see that it actually opens out just like this tunnel thing into this other realm out that I, that was completely different from the space that I was going through. And, uh, and as I burst out, almost like a birth, like that's the only way that I can say it. I burst through, it's like a membrane. And I burst into this heavenly realm, this realm of the light. And I'm headed towards this, what I think is a sun. Remember, I thought it was a star as I was seeing it, but it has grown into my vision so big now. And it was truly, truly brighter than 10,000 suns. That was the only words I could think. Um, I'm thinking like, how is that possible? But as I'm going towards it and it was beautiful and it was a, a white level of purity that does not exist here in this life. And not only was it a color, it was alive. It was a living light. And I, I could know that. And as I'm heading towards it, and I'm looking then down into this light because it's all, you know, all my vision is now focused on this. And I look down into the light and I can see the form of a man. And it's, you know, I can't make out the features. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's the shape of a man with arms outstretched to me to hug me. And so I, I'm just amazed by it. And the light that I'm seeing is coming out of the man. And at that moment, I enter the light. And that's the only way I can say it. I enter this light. And at that same moment, the light enters me. And what this light is, is, the, is God himself. God is this light. I know it's actually Jesus. I know it is actually God. And he's filling me, filling me, filling me with himself. The love of God is beyond, beyond description, Randy. You, you've been there. You, you know I, this, the love of God. If, if we were to take all of the greatest facets of love on this earth, the even even just the symbolic versions of it, and we were to put it all together and then multiply it times a billion, then that would not be the case. It, you would God's love is infinite. It is infinitely deep. Now let me tell you quickly what this is. God, I knew this was Jesus. I knew this was God. I had this knowledge. He was the way, the truth, and the life. Even though I didn't know any scripture yet, I'd only been a Christian for one week. And so he then fills me with all this knowledge of himself, and I ask all about it. And I am then uh, saying that uh, everything about you is true. Everything written about you is true. That means everything about the cross, that's also true. And in that moment, he transported me through time and space to that place right at the foot of the cross where he was being crucified. And I knew I was really there. And I'm looking up at this most horribly tortured person that I know is Jesus on the cross in front of me. And I can hear his thoughts and his thoughts are to me and his thoughts are this, that, and I knew this to be true, Randy, it unquestionably true that if I was the only person in all of creation that ever would have said yes to him, I'm sorry, it's, it's always so powerful. It's always so powerful. If I was the only person that ever said yes to him, he would have gone to that cross just for me, and, and I knew it was true, but I knew also it was also true he would have done that for every other person, every other person. He did it for every other person, and I was just broken. I was shattered. I was crushed to a powder, the truth of that. I was just, 
I'm, I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm all yours. And give me all you got. I, I want all of you. And so that's what happened. And I recognized the father is also there. And the I can't make out the father, but I, you know, because I can't see anything. But I know there he is right next to Jesus. I can interact with him, talk to him and everything else. And I can say that, you know, when I asked them, I asked Jesus, can I stay? And both of them in unison say no lovingly. And, uh, and, but the voice of the father was just earth shattering, mountain crushing, powerful. It was very loving, but it was so powerful. You, you could just like, wow, wow, it was beyond belief. But I knew I had to come back. And I came back just like I left. And I went through the tunnel with all of the angels still there. And I came back through the roof. Uh, Linda was still sitting there on the curb watching me come in. I go through the roof and I can remember every single detail of it. And where I enter my body, my feet, actually, I enter it feet first, but I was going so fast that when my body connected and locked in, there was like all I can call like a rebound effect where I was then my physical body was physically thrown up and over the end of the bed out into the middle of our bedroom floor where I hit face down, boom, right on my chest. And then suddenly I was back in pain and I was here. I reached out, I tried to get my wife's attention because that woke her up finally. And uh, so I reached up, grabbed her foot, and she woke with a start. And she looked at me and she said, Wayne. And I said, I just met God. And I ultimately collapsed right there on the floor. I didn't have any strength left, but she jumped up and I and came around to me and I told her everything about it. And I have not stopped telling people about this amazing love of God who is coming for us so very soon since that day, Randy. Well, we're going to have to end it here, but thank you so much again for sharing with us, Wayne. And uh, for those who are in Christ Jesus, be of good cheer because heaven is in your future. Take Amen. care. Thank you for watching this episode of Heaven Encounters. If you'd like more information, you can go to Randy K Ministries at randyk.org. Take care and God bless.